What you are watching here in real time at low speed are close air support planes that are never going to actually affect the two combats taking place in Western Poland. Close air support planes are flying from an airfield. They are technically within range of the Western Poland air region. You can see that they have poor mission efficiency, but they do have range for that air region. But as we watch the battle taking place over here, no close air support aircraft are joining it because these planes are not within range. Their range circle does not cover the actual ground combats taking place. What we are seeing here is that there are consequences to aircraft design between tax and CAS because those who are very keen-eyed will have noticed that despite the planes operating from this airfield, the center of their circle is somewhere over here. So not everything is as it appears to be in close air support and tactical bomber design. Because today I really want to talk about the effectiveness and the design of bombers. Close air support and tactical bombers. And while I have a clickbaity title on this video trying to determine which is better, close air support or tactical bombers, the reality of the situation is that this video is going to be a little more ph philosophical than my video on fighters. Fighters are really easy to match up head to head and you can come up with a meta for them super fast. When it comes to close air support and tactical bombers, things are a little more complicated. So this video is going to be a little different. The first section of the video will be a discussion of the philosophy of designing close air support and tactical bombers. How to optimize them and what are the considerations for them. The second half of the video, we will talk about actual practical designs. So if you don't care about any of the design ideas that go into uh, how I design tactical bombers and close air support aircraft, skip to the time code that's on the screen and you can just go look at the planes that I've designed. Uh, but I want to provide the ex explanation of how I come up with these designs and how you should be looking at bomber design when trying to optimize aircraft for supporting ground forces because it's kind of more complicated than you might think. And if you have any complaints with how poorly Barbarossa is going here as I force these tanks to mindlessly drive all over the Baltic states, leave a comment down below. I can't guarantee I'll have a good answer for you, but I promise I can have some kind of an answer for you. In turning to the philosophy of design behind creating awesome ground attack aircraft, we have to talk about certain high-minded philosophical concepts because it becomes very difficult to determine if a plane like this single-engine cast is any good versus this dual-engine tack, this triple-engine tack, or this dual-engine cast. They all have wildly different stats, wildly different weights, wildly different costs, and in some cases, an insane array of different modules. When we talk about the philosophy of aircraft design, we want to be able to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of these planes, not just in a does it look cool in the designer kind of way, but in practical application on the battlefield. And while I've employed a lot of these concepts I'm about to show you generally throughout my career of playing Hearts of Iron 4, I've kind of systematized them into a chart right here in order to make it easier to understand what I'm doing and what I'm talking about with aircraft design. And when we look here at my close air support efficiency matrix, you need to understand that there are a couple of tensions that are impossible to fully resolve in close air support slash tactical bomber design. There's the concentration of force aspect versus the production efficiency aspect. It is impossible to design a plane that does both of those things well. There are also some issues related to emphasizing range versus uh, emphasizing concentration of force 
And there are also some issues related to Mio's that I'll bring up a little bit later when we look at practical designs. But when we want to look at these designs, there is the goal of having enough concentration of force, but we also want to have production efficiency. I could have the absolute best plane in the universe with a ground attack value of 150, but if I can only make one of them, that doesn't do me very much good. On the other hand, if I make 27,000 close air support aircraft that each have a ground attack value of three, well, there's not even enough airfields in Europe to support that many planes. I've wasted my time going too far to production efficiency. But what I can't do is do both at the same time. So let's go through these concepts real quick. And the one I have at the top is the most important one that governs all of these other steps, which is you cannot mitigate losses to Division AA. Let me make that clear. There is nothing you as a player can do to reduce the losses you take to Division AA. Now, there are things you can do to reduce your losses to Naval AA. There are things you can do to reduce your losses to state-based AA when doing strategic bombing. But when I'm bombing divisions using ground attack aircraft, there is nothing I can do to a plane to reduce the losses it takes to those AA guns. There are no modules I can put on it. There are no stats I can modify. Nothing. You send 100 planes to go bomb a division, you're just going to lose X number of those planes to AA. doesn't matter how cheap or expensive those planes are. For those of you who are paying attention, you've already figured out what this means. That means the more expensive a plane is, the more it's going to cost you to bomb divisions that have AA. I do a lot of silly things against the AI when I'm playing, and I like to talk about how the AI isn't always very smart. But Hearts of Iron 4's AI is smart enough to use AA guns in most of its frontline divisions when playing against a major power like the Soviets, Germany, Britain, and so on. You are going to lose planes to AI divisions because they will have AA guns in them. The more expensive you make your planes, the more of an impact these AA guns are going to have. You gain nothing by adding expensive bells and whistles to planes that are on ground attack unless it is helping them inflict more damage or it's help get, helping them to achieve more range or some other effect. Okay, two. Aircraft can only participate in ground combats in range. Just like I showed you at the beginning of the video where we had those close air support aircraft flying in the western Poland air region but they were not within range of the combats taking place so they could not reach it. This means that in order to really make good use of any ground attack aircraft, whether it's CAS or TAC, they need enough range to actually reach where they're going. If they don't have the range to actually physically reach the combat, they will not participate. This would favor designs that have more range, obviously, but adding range to planes makes their cost go up and tactical bombers have naturally higher range, but they are of course naturally more expensive than close air support aircraft. Again, concentration of force versus production efficiency. Three, more powerful ground attack weapons are less efficient. Now, here's what I mean by that. If we go and take a look at this triple engine tack for a second. And this is a triple engine tack because it has so many heavy modules on it that it weighs a ton. Now it has an impressive 37 ground attack. We take a look at the cast weapons and we see, oh, okay. Anti-tank cannon two, ground attack 15, weight of 12. Anti-tank cannon one, ground attack of eight for weight of eight, okay. Small bomb bay, a total weight of six, four went on close air support mission and a base of two for ground attack of eight. Ground attack of six for a weight of four, ground attack of eight for a weight of six, and of course a ground attack of four for a weight of one. What you will notice is that this module here, while it has an impressive amount of ground attack, it is not nearly as weight efficient as these bomb locks are. 
you get more ground attack per weight for bomb locks than you do with this anti-tank cannon. And you get more ground attack per weight for these rocket rails than you do for any of these other things. Wow, rockets are so weight efficient. So you would think, oh, that means I should use weight efficient modules like the rocket rails. That's what I should do, put rocket rails and everything. Except as the next part of the matrix tells us, module slots are finite. So, while I would love to use the most weight-efficient weapons, I only have so many slots in order to put weapons. And there are fewer slots on CAS airframes than there are on tactical bomber airframes. Which means that when we're talking about efficiency in our planes, again, we can be production efficient or we can have concentration of force. This tactical bomber has far more concentration of force than, say, this single engine cast plane, but you're paying for that by having all those module slots filled with ridiculously weight inefficient weapons to achieve this impressive ground attack stack stat of 37. And it means I've got to put a third engine on there, which means this plane is more than twice as expensive as that close air support aircraft. However, it has enough weight left over to also add another extra fuel tank, which gives it ridiculously higher range compared to this plane. This brings us to our next consideration. Engines will always be the most expensive part of the aircraft. That is why we get into these radically different costs between close air support, and tactical bombers. This single engine cast has just one engine. That engine is a production cost of 16 out of the plane's total cost of 29. This is the most expensive module on the plane. We take a look at this triple engine tack. Well, we put three engines on it. That's a production cost of 48 out of a total aircraft cost of 84. But just to be clear, the three engines on this tactical bomber cost more by themselves, before we put anything else on that tactical bomber, cost more than this entire aircraft. Not only that, this dual engine module here on the tactical bomber also costs more at a production cost of 32 than this 29 production cost cast. So when we are talking about aircraft design and we're talking about production efficiency, Every engine you put on an aircraft radically increases its cost. That's just the engine. They are insanely expensive. Which brings us to our final consideration. Combat width limits the number of aircraft that can perform ground attack. Now, this is something that's uh, not immediately obvious because the game doesn't really explain it. But if we look to the wiki, we can see that the wiki will tell us that there are only a finite number of planes allowed in any particular ground combat. And that number is three times the enemy frontage in the battle. That's not the total possible frontage, that's the actual frontage of physically present enemy divisions. So if you only have like a two with single battalion defending a tile, you can't dogpile that single battalion with 500 aircraft. It's not going to work even if it's in planes. What this practically means for most players, though, is that you want planes with more overall ground attack because only so many planes can enter a specific combat, therefore maximizing damage. But as we've already seen, the more ground attack you squeeze into an aircraft, the more expensive it gets the harder it is to produce those planes. And we should also bear further in mind that you cannot manually allocate planes to specific battles. So, if you're fighting in Barbarossa and there's 50 battles taking place across the front, your ground attack aircraft will be parceled out to several of them, even if you would rather them all focus on one. If you don't have enough ground attack aircraft to cover all the battles, then it doesn't matter how much concentration of force you have per plane, you are not gonna be allocating the maximum number of planes to all combat. These philosophical considerations means that if you only had to worry about concentration of force, you would build something like this triple engine tack. But if you cared about production efficiency, you'd be building planes that look like this. But both planes 
carry with them such extensive disadvantages in the other category that neither of them necessarily represents something you should be practically using. This single engine cast has such short range that even though you can spam it at a 29 production cost, it's not going to be bringing as much pain as you want because with that low range, it may not even reach all of the combats. This triple engine tactical bomber has a 1600 kilometer range. It's gonna have no problem reaching combats. It's got a ground attack of 37. It's got plenty of concentration of, cor of force, but are you really gonna be able to make enough of these at a production cost of 84 in order to blanket the skies in them? Probably not. And just for a comparison, I want to point something out. I just want to note for comparison purposes that I have here a Moss with the cast armor module that makes it more expensive to give it more armor and Christy, susp and Christy suspension and a gasoline engine and the super heavy gun that costs the same as that tactical bomber we were looking at. So when I say that that plane is expensive. It's this expensive. It's expensive as a super heavy tank. Hold up there, counterfactuals. Counterfactual from the future. You need to remind our audience that we are not factoring armored trains into this discussion anywhere, as I don't know of any math that has been published about the efficiency with which armored trains shoot down ground attack aircraft that are on logistics strike. I don't have any numbers for that. I can't even test it effectively. I also don't think it is a significant part of this discussion, but I have really clever viewers and I know someone's going to be asking, what about armored trains? And my answer to that is, I have no freaking idea. Sorry, I don't. Uh, we're just gonna pretend that that's not a factor while we talk about the rest of this because I don't have information on that. And while I do lose planes to armored trains, they are so small in number that I'm not worried about it in my designs. Okay, so enough about theory. Let's talk about practicality. How should we design our, our ground attack aircraft? Should we be using CAS? Should we be using TAX? What do we do? Well, my answer to you is that it really depends. Uh, I'm going to show you some options and I'm gonna talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each of those options. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about Mio's, specifically because Germany has one Mio that really changes this discussion. I want to talk about general planes first, then we'll talk about applying Junkers to German aircraft. So, what should we do? Well, I this what what you're seeing up here is what I consider to be a solid starting design for a single engine CAS plane. It has the right kind of modules on the top row to give it a solid ground attack of 22. And it has the extra fuel tanks that give it a real range. Uh, 975 is a decent range for a single engine close air support plane. If we removed this, we can add some more firepower to it. We could upgrade this to the heavy bomb blocks and give us two more ground attack. But that puts the range at 650, and I don't consider a range of 650 to be useful in enough situations. I really don't think it is. So we instead go with regular bomb locks. We go with two of these small bomb bays because they provide a good solid ground attack rating of eight when on close air support missions. We could have put in this, but it's less weight efficient and that causes problems. We could have also put in this, but you'll notice that this module, the anti-tank cannon one, has the same ground attack value as the small bomb bay, but it costs more and weighs more. So like this anti-tank cannon one in most situations isn't useful. Like really you should be using Small bomb bay, small bomb bay, something here that does, and, and either regular bomb locks or heavy bomb locks if you don't think you need the range. But I'm telling you, I think you need that range. Go ahead and crank it up to 975. This is a solid plane. It only costs 30. If we go make a dual engine cast, our math changes significantly. 
we now have a much more expensive plane that's certainly a big price tag increase but we can improve our ground attack substantially by swapping out the bomb locks for anti-tank cannon 2. Now you can't have more than one anti-tank cannon too otherwise i might have tried to reconfigure the plane that way so we only allowed one so we're going to still use these bomb bays with anti-tank cannon too but because we now have so much thrust we have a bigger budget for weight we can add drop tanks and we can add dive brakes those dive brakes are going to provide the same air defense as armor plates will but without the range reduction now dive brakes only work on close air support naval strike and port strike but what else is this plane going to do the answer is nothing it will always be performing those missions so it will always benefit from that plus four to air defense and while i know a lot of players don't like this drop tank module the reason i'm putting it there is because it doesn't have the air defense reduction of the extra fuel tanks and to be honest we have the weight budget for it. This design gives us a plane with slightly higher air defense, so this plane will be a little more survivable in air-to-air -air combat should it get engaged in air-to-air -air combat, but it now has the excellent range of just over 1,100 kilometers. This makes this close air support plane better than the single engine one. However, it is almost twice as expensive and you are certainly not getting twice as much ground attack out of it the question you'd have to ask yourself is is the range worth it and is the extra concentration of force worth it but i want you to hold that thought for a second because we're going to look at this ground attack value a little later when we apply yunkers to this plane what about tactical bomber when we take a look at our first tactical bomber the dual engine tactical bomber we see a plane that has slightly higher ground attack from the both the regular cast and the dual engine cast. We see a plane that has a higher range than the single engine cast, but not higher range than the dual engine cast. We see a plane that's slightly more expensive than the dual engine cast, but is really much more expensive than the single engine cast. Uh, we also see a plane that has higher air defense than either of those planes. We see a plane that's used, utilizing bomb blocks to great effect because we have an extra module slot to play with. That is the big advantage of the 1940 medium airframe. Is that you get more module slots. So we can budget our weight differently. We can use the anti-tank cannon and the bomb blocks and the tactical bomb bay in order to achieve this ground attack. But I want you to notice something about the tactical bomber and this is one of the things that I think nerfs the tactical bomber compared to the CAS. Look at what's in the first slot. I have to include the medium bomb bay. Now the medium bomb bay has a weight, uh, a base weight of one plus five weight when on close air support, port strike and log strike, and only gives a ground attack of six. Just for comparison, bomb locks give the same ground attack for a weight of four. Also those bomb locks cost one. This medium bomb bay costs six. So this medium bomb bay that we're looking at that is a required module on a medium airframe isn't doing the tactical bomber any favors. Now, someone is probably about to say, ah, but counterfactual, you can mount fighter weapons on it. And this is 100% true. I can mount heavy machine guns. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff. But if I do that, it's going to lower my ground attack. And now I only have three module slots to play with for ground attack modules, which puts it on par with the cast. So why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. So tactical bombers are kind of gimped by the medium bomb bay requirement on them. Now the advantage of the medium bomb bay is it does mean that these planes can be used on strategic bombing. But for what we're talking about right now, we you probably don't care about that. If we take a look at the triple engine tack that I've designed here, you're gonna notice that we have a lot more budget to add firepower to this plane. We can stack on two of the small bomb bays to give us a ground attack of eight each one, and then we keep this anti-tank cannon too. Now, if you didn't know, yeah, you can add small bomb bays to medium airframes. You don't have to use the medium bomb bay. In fact, I wouldn't stack medium bomb bays unless you really wanted to. If you're focusing solely on ground attack, use these small bomb bays. They're better. 
And even with all that firepower added to the plane, I can still add 50% range by adding extra fuel tanks, bringing the range of this tactical bomber up to 1,600 kilometers. This would allow the plane to bring a whole bunch of ground attack pain from really far away. And you'll notice it has a much higher ground attack value. We still actually have weight left in our thrust budget. We have four weight. So you still could apply any of these modules here or even add defensive turrets if that was something that you really wanted to do. I'm not gonna explore those options right now other than say that you could spec this plane towards air defense even more than it is already. Or you could spec it for more range if you thought it needed more range or you could make it a flying boat if you also wanted it to blow up ships. With a range of 1650, you really could get some work done against ships. But because it's a triple engine plane, yeah, it's got a production cost of 80, which makes this plane hideously expensive. Again, remember, our single engine cast that we were initially designing only cost 30. This is not just twice as expensive as that, it's two, It's more than two and a half times as expensive as that. And it is most certainly not providing two and a half times as much ground attack per plane. It's bringing more concentration of force, 100% definitely, more concentration of force, more range. But at what cost? It's, the costs are insane. Someone probably wants to see what four engines look like, so I can slap on a four engine, but you'll notice that, again, I can't stack anti-tank cannon twos, so since I'm limited to four modules, putting a fourth engine on there just gives me more options on the bottom row. It doesn't actually allow me to add a whole bunch of extra firepower to the plane. So, yeah, you can make a four engine tactical bomber if you want, but, like, at that point... What are you doing with your IC? I mean, it's, it's just insane. Now, all we've been talking about here has clearly shown a dichotomy between medium airframes and light airframes. Tactical bombers bring more damage per plane, giving them the advantage in concentration of force. Tactical bombers also have the range advantage in many circumstances. Casts tend to have the advantage in production cost and efficiency. You want more planes? You go with casts. You want more damage per plane and you want more flexibility on range? You go with tax. All that is about to change. All of that is about to change because I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Junkers, the close aircraft support aircraft designer. And I want you to look at the bonuses for a second. Do you see what I see? Yeah, what I see there is a plus 50% to ground attack, okay? Let's talk about how big of a bonus that is. Remember our single engine cast? Ground attack of 22. We slap Yunkers on it. That is now a ground attack of 33. Just as a reminder, the ground attack on the dual engine tack was 33. That is a substantial boost to firepower. But you're going to say, but wait a second, what about all those aircraft designers for medium aircraft? And you're right, we've got some. We've got the multi-role aircraft designer, Fock Wolf, which adds 15% ground attack. And we have Henkel, which is the multi-role tactical aircraft designer, which adds 30% to ground attack. Well, what do those look like? If we take the dual engine tactical bomber and we apply Fock Wolf to it, it gets up to 37. Eh, it's not great. We apply Henkel to it. Now it's 42.9. Okay, wow, that's a significant boost. Again, smaller percentage boost because the Mio has a smaller percentage bonus to ground attack than the Cass Mio Yunkers does. But because the plane has a higher base ground attack value, it gets more mileage out of it. Okay, so if we even look at the triple engine one and we put Henkel on there, that's 48.1. Okay. So far, it seems like balance has been maintained. I do want to point out, though, that Henkel does add a 5% production cost increase in exchange for this list of bonuses. But what happens when I pull the dual engine cast out? Now, remember, this plane, we talked about it had advantages and it had disadvantages. It has a ground attack of 31. I slap Yunkers on it, 
Now it has a ground attack of 46.5 at a cost of 56. Compare that to Henkel attached to the dual engine tack. And what do we see? Ah, dual engine tack, 42.9. Dual engine cast, 46.5. Yunkers makes this dual engine cast more efficient in terms of concentration of force than the dual engine tack, but it is also cheaper than the dual engine tack, and it's a light aircraft, so it uses less aluminum than the dual engine tack. What about triple engine tack? Slap Henkel on there. Here, let me go ahead and apply all of the things to the Mio so I don't have to keep pressing the buttons. Triple engine tack now costs 84 for a ground attack of 48.1. Now, this is technically more ground attack than the dual engine cast, but it is also ridiculously more expensive than the dual engine cast for a tiny increase in ground attack. It does still have that excellent range compared to the dual engine cast because dual engine cast is only at 1137 triple engine tack is coming in at uh 1705 and you could further boost that if you wanted to by adding some more stuff on the bottom row but is a ground attack of 48.1 worth all that increased cost compared to a ground attack of 46.5 and i i i can't see a use case for this much cost for this much ground attack if you need the range i guess you might do this but thanks to yunkers and all of the other close air support designers in the game dual engine cast i think completely beats out triple engine tack and dual engine tack in 99 percent of use cases you still have to choose whether you want to do single engine or dual engine on your aircraft. But Yunkers, because of its ridiculous bonus, makes this dual engine cast a beast. It is insane. And what countries have access to that designer? Well, Germany does. Britain has Hawker. Italy has a designer that does that. And the U.S. has a cast designer. It's Lockheed for the U.S. The Soviets... France and Japan do not have designers that do that. All you need to know is Italy does have that designer and even with these penalties that you can mitigate, it has access to that excellent cast. So if you are one of the countries that has that designer, I would strongly encourage you to just pretend tactical bombers don't exist and make a cast using that designer. And that about wraps it up for us today. I hope that you've seen how I like to design aircraft and how you can design tactical and close air support aircraft for your own use. And that you've seen how it's not just about trying to get a cookie cutter build, but it's about understanding what you can do to make your own planes better within the confines of the system. While I was making this video, a patch did drop, an official patch that changed the way airframes functioned, and I did incorporate that into the video. In fact, I had to refilm a bunch of footage because some of my designs were illegal. Uh, but this information is valid for the current version of Stella Polaris. Uh, I am working on a whole other video dealing with uh, fighters uh, again because even though I just published a video on the meta for light fighters as everyone knows all that was rendered obsolete in about 10 days due to paradox changing some of the mechanics and those mechanical changes have been significant uh, but until I put that content out there uh, the weather is pretty good where I am right now for once and I hope everything is pleasant where you are and until I talk to you again, I hope that you are having a pleasant day.